During an OSINT investigation, a subject's phone number can be the gateway to a treasure trove of information. Today, we'll explore a variety of different tools to extract information from a subject's phone number on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. When posting something on Craigslist, the average person might hesitate to put their phone number out there. You don't know why, but putting your phone number on the internet just seems wrong because you don't know what someone could really do with it. Today, we're going to show a little bit about what someone can do if they get a hold of your number. And we're going to take a phone number that we find online and run it through a couple different tools to determine what we can about the person behind it. Now what we're expecting to find are online accounts that have been created with that phone number, email addresses, names, and even the carrier, and sometimes we can even find other people who are searching for this phone number too. Because of that, you might want to use Tor or a VPN before using some of these tools because they will log requests for a particular phone number, so if somebody's checking this, it could tip them off to the fact that you're searching for their phone number. Now you'll need Python in order to use one of the command line tools, but aside from that, you'll just need to use a web browser in order to use this. Once you have Python fully updated on your system, then we can get started. Now to get started using phone numbers in an OSINT investigation, we're going to need to use a couple tools. The first I want to use is Phone Infoga which was made by uh, Sundown Dev and is a really interesting tool that parses and then extracts meaning from a lot of different types of phone numbers. So this isn't just the phone number for your particular country, it also works on international uh, codes as well. And you can generally learn whether or not a phone number is a voice over IP number or whether it has a particular carrier and learn maybe whether that number is publicly listed as a throwaway number as well. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, there are a lot of numbers available where if you're signing up for a service, you might just use a publicly listed number to send the verification code, so you don't need to list a number that's personally associated with you. Now, there's a lot of these numbers around, and they are definitely a way that you could maybe get away with something that you're not supposed to, just because you have access to a computer and then a supposedly secure phone number to verify an account that you could use to maybe do something bad. Now, if we wanted to find out whether or not a phone number uh, that is being used for something is from one of those maybe public repositories, we can see an example here of a free mobile number. And this is just some random 336 number, which is from France. Uh, and if I was in France, I would be able to register all sorts of different stuff. You can see we can even get voicemails. Uh, so this is a way that somebody could maybe set up a scam or something like that. So if we were getting some text from this number, we might have no way of knowing that this was a free publicly available number that anybody could get a hold of. So as just a regular person, how would we get to know this? Well, we could take this number and we could use it in phone in Foga to eventually learn that this was publicly listed and not a number on a regular carrier. So let's go about doing that. Well, how do we get started? If you're interested in this tool, you can first check out this really interesting Medium post on building this tool, because if uh, if you've ever been curious about the, how these sorts of things are made, or uh, if you've ever wanted to know what it's like to actually see um, you know, the insides of how these tools are parsed, it's a really interesting read and a good idea for developers who are, might be considering making something of their own. Now, if you're just looking to install it, you'll need to have Python 3 and also pip3 installed. And if you want to check to see if you have those, you can type Python 3 and you should get uh, this shell right here. And then we'll go ahead and just quit and control L to clear the screen. So next we'll need to do a git clone and we can just go ahead and copy this, but it won't work for me because there's already files where I'm trying to put them, but for you, it should go ahead and download everything we need to run this tool. So we'll CD into phone in Foga, and then LS, and we can see everything that's inside. And we can see that the installation requirements are pretty basic. Python 3, uh, tac m pip, oops, and install. 
tag r requirements.txt. Now it'll go ahead and say that everything I have is already up to date, but for you it'll probably need to install or update some libraries to make sure that info, uh, phone and fogo will work exactly the way it's supposed to. Now once these finish updating, as you can see mine should already be done, we can also go ahead and create a configuration file, but I've already done that so I'm going to skip it and instead go to the part where we're going to show that we have it successfully installed by requesting the version number. And when we run it, we should see a little ASCII art and then just, yep, uh, that we have version 1.0.2. Great. So now we can actually make a request. So when we want to verify our previous, oops, uh, when we want to verify our previous phone number that we mentioned, we can type first tack h to show a list of all the various commands that we can run. So we can see if we want to input a number, it's tack n. So we'll add tack n, and then we can copy and paste this uh, obviously very sketchy number in here and see what kind of result we get. And if we want more information, we can also type OSINT, which we will do here. But uh, fair warning, this can take some time. So let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. So we'll go ahead and press N for using an additional format. Now, after some of the results come in, I can expand this and see a little bit more information. Here we can see that it's based in France. Uh, it is on this particular carrier, and it also is possibly a voice over IP number, which is an indicator it could be used for something sketchy. But in this case, we also already have a lot of hits on freesmscode.com, so we know that it's probably a free SMS number and not a number we should put very much stock in when it comes to maybe actually representing a real person. Instead, this is a number that could be used by pretty much anyone to register anything, so we definitely wouldn't want to trust someone who's representing this as their real number. Now I'm going to go ahead and let this search in the background because this tool can take quite some time if you have a slow internet connection, but I want to show you an interesting way of just using a web browser to get a lot of the same results and maybe verify a claim that you find online. Now in Firefox, I'm going to go ahead and go to a random classified ad that I found and look for something that we can attempt to verify using OSINT information. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at for sale. Hmm. Let's see. Wanted. There we go. So uh, we have someone who's claiming to be a licensed professional. So wanted. Uh, highest cash paid for junk or good cars, licensed professional, and then a phone number. So this is a business. I don't feel so bad for actually looking them up. Can we verify that this phone number belongs to an actual licensed professional, as this person says? Or could this be a sketchy uh, free SMS code number and this is actually some sort of scam? Well, before we sell our precious junk car, let's make sure to do our due diligence. And one of the best ways of doing this is to go to a website operated by Mike Bazell. So uh, IntelTechniques.com is a fantastic website for learning everything there is about OSINT. Uh, and Mike's techniques are amazing. Uh, all of them are really interesting and cool. And today we're going to use one of his tools, which if you go on his main website, we'll start here, uh, click on tools, and that's IntelTechniques.com. Uh, and then go to the telephone number and telephone search tool. Now we're going to go ahead and type in the number, I'll just put it up here so I can see it, that we found that we're attempting to verify, and that's going to be this. So one of the things that Mike has done is make it so it's really easy to search through all of the various resources he's found to basically get a result. So we'll populate all of these, and when we scroll down, we can see that when we hit submit all, we're hitting all these public databases at the same time. Now, many of these have uh, paid offerings, and pretty much all of them will get you to try to pay, but the majority of them will offer partial information scraped from various databases that will allow you to learn more about the person behind this and hopefully verify this claim of being a licensed professional. So let's go ahead and click submit all, and a whole bunch of windows will open. 
Now, again, what Mike has done here is take all these databases and automate our ability to search through them really quickly. So already we can see that this links back to someone named Paul and that uh, we have a address already, so that's great. Uh, and we can verify now, maybe we could go back and identify whether or not a business was registered at this or a home address, although I suspect this would probably be a home address. So one thing you'll notice is a lot of these actually won't find anything, and a lot of these will also detect that it's an automated, uh, let's see, it's asking me to prove I'm not a robot, and I generally, I can see behind it that it doesn't have that much information for me, so I'm already, I'm, I don't have anything to prove to this one, I don't think. Oh, no, there we go, so we, now we get a name, um, and if we exit out of this one, we get a couple that just straight up don't work. Uh, here we can see that this is a mobile number. We can see that it's a sprint number. Um, and that gives us a little bit more information about kind of, uh, what's going on. And then we see this. So we see the person's age group. We see the length that they've lived there, the household size. Uh, it's trying to give us their IP address. Uh, and then this even has some sort of insane score about their wealth and their shopping score, how much they travel, uh, occupation, blue collar man. Like, what does that even mean? But either way, uh, aside from that, also an insane estimation of their net worth, we've really learned a lot more in information about this person than we thought. But are they a licensed professional? We still don't know. So let's continue to dig a little bit deeper. So we have no results in this particular database. Uh, and then we have a lot of information about uh, uh, just relatives and stuff like that. Um, again, not particularly helpful. Uh, we have a confirmation that this is a Sprint mobile number, which um, again, not super, super helpful, but that's okay. Uh, so we'll go ahead and keep searching. And again, what I'm looking for is some sort of verification that this is in fact a licensed professional and this is not somebody who's just kind of jerking us around. So let's continue to search, see if we've got anything here. And this uh, search engine in particular is extra creepy. And whoa, all right, we have like a full readout. Uh, oh, and a photo. I didn't need that. Oh, and a username. Oh, I didn't need that at all. Associate with, we have his whole family. Okay, so this is um, why sometimes on the internet, you shouldn't just give out your phone number. Um, we have a personal Facebook and a bunch of other information I'm sure we'll blur out. So. Uh, great. All right. We know that this is, uh, and we can see that he's also a uh, salesperson. So that's, that's great. We can at least, we're starting to go closer to our conclusion. Um, but for the love of God, can we just find out if this person is a licensed professional or not? I don't need to know what his Facebook is. So of course, if we were a hacker or someone else, we've already managed to find enough information to really track this guy down, especially the, we found a, a screen name and that would be instrumental in finding email addresses. But this, this is what I was looking for. Here we can see his business is listed as an LLC, and in fact, it also includes his last name. So that leads me to think that perhaps this is actually a licensed professional. Now, the way we would do this is to cross-reference this with publicly available data. So I'm gonna go to my third favorite website, which of course is the Pennsylvania Secretary of State Business Search. So I will go ahead and go to, let me see if I have it. I'm sure I have this in my bookmarks. All right, so let's go ahead and type in the business name that we found, run a quick search. And here we can see that we have a current transportation entity that is a active uh, status limited liability company, so it's an LLC. So we have in fact proved that this random phone number on the internet does in fact belong to a licensed professional. Now, this is pretty much going out of our way to prove a point, but there is a lot we can do by cross-referencing information we find associated with a phone number with other publicly searchable databases like, for example, the Pennsylvania Secretary of State Business License. So if you have access to all this information and you can start with maybe a name or an address or other things you can put into these databases, you can begin to build a picture of a target and either figure out if they are a legitimate person to do business with or if they might be a scammer who's using a public uh, phone number to get around verification and just create a bunch of spam accounts. Now, one last tip before we finish up, there are a couple downsides to using the first tool because if I go back to the tool, as you can see here, we can sometimes accidentally get blacklisted from Google search. Now this is really annoying, but the way to get around it is fairly simple. And I wanna show you so that if it happens to you and you get stuck, you can also go ahead and fix it. 
So if you open this link, then it will give you a capture to fill out. And once you successfully complete it, you should get a special cookie. Now I've already completed the captcha. And if you press uh, Alt F12, Alt F12, yep. And then go to storage, you should be able to scroll through the cookies that have been received. And you're looking for one that's titled Google abuse exemption. That means you're exempt from this ban. So we're gonna go ahead and copy the value of this cookie like this and paste it into the script like that. And that will get you unbanned from Google so that you can continue to do your scans. Now, I'm not gonna continue doing this one because it does take quite some time, but as you can see, we got some great results on this and provided we can continue to get exemptions, we can continue to scan and get more information about this phone number. During an OSINT investigation, our goal is to take small pieces of data and begin stringing them together into a larger picture. Starting with a phone number, we can use the sources we've defined to start building up that picture into online accounts or even complaints against a phone number that might be listing an apartment that seems too good to be true. Obviously, these techniques aren't just useful for hackers or researchers. They're also useful for regular people who might want to check out a phone number behind an account or a posting that seems too good to be true. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have any questions, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.